We've heard a lot about text messages. I'd like to, the Democrats and the people on the January 6th committee to produce their text messages, Mr. Speaker, denouncing Antifa BLM riots that raged across American cities for a year. I would love to read those. But instead, we saw Democrats encourage, incite, and continue to call these riots peaceful. And then when they got arrested and put in jail, they bailed them out so they could go out and riot some more. I rise in opposition to this resolution to hold Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress because it's being held by nothing but a kangaroo court. Congress's job is to make laws, not enforce them. That's the role of the executive and the judicial branch of this government. But somehow the communists here in charge have forgotten, or no, not forgotten, are purposely abusing the Constitution and what this, this body of Congress is supposed to do. You see, when we go to this level, to the point where we're forgetting and abusing what our power is, then the American people will trust us no more. And that is exactly what the January 6th committee is doing. Mr. Speaker, hundreds of people have come forward to testify about the violent and dangerous events of January the 6th. It's just a handful of people like Mr. Bannon, like Mr. Meadows, who somehow think that they're above the law. We are not a banana republic because we hold everybody to equality under the law, and we are not communists, as the gentlelady from Georgia suggested. That's just the friends of the former president who you lionize, like the dictator of North Korea who he loves, and Vladimir Putin, who said that the greatest tragedy of the 20th century was the collapse of the Soviet Union. So those are your friends. Don't put them on our side. They're saying that the January 6th committee is out to persecute and bankrupt their opponents. On the contrary, we're out to write a report under House Resolution 503 to the American people about the most violent and sweeping dangerous attack on the Republic since the Civil War or the War of 1812. Mr. Bannon's raising money on it, far from bankrupting Mr. Bannon, he's trying to get rich on it. And Mark Meadows has written a book where he tells all of the stories he wants about January the 6th. It's just he doesn't want to face the rule of law and the questions of this bipartisan committee, which is making tremendous progress in terms of getting the truth of what happened on that day. I recommend to all of my colleagues who invoke the rule of law today that they read the D.C. Circuit Court of Opinion, which obliterates every single argument that they've made about executive privilege. It's basically gone now because the way the law works is the people have a right to get the information we want unless there's a compelling interest on the other side. They haven't even pretended to, have, to invoke a compelling interest. What's the compelling interest in being able to prepare an insurrection, a coup against the government? Is that what we want to establish a precedent for? That outgoing presidents can try to organize an insurrection against the vice president and encourage people who go out and stage a riot against the Vice President of the United States and the Congress? I don't think so. 